defeat again. Final Fantasy Tactics gives you so many different combinations to build your generic characters with. It's no wonder that not every build is completely optimized for PvP. That's why today we're going to go over our top 4 favorite builds to get you back on the winning track. Hi, I'm Mikey from Final Fantasy Tactics Live Tournament. And today I want to discuss some of our favorite builds that give us a competitive edge when we're playing against our friends in PvP. The way we reached this conclusion for our top 4 builds was through our ranking system. The reason our characters rank so high was because they deliver a lot of value, meaning they output a lot of damage and they don't need a lot of support from other characters to make themselves good. Next we look at are their base stats really great or do they need equipment to bolster them and make them competitive? Also, like our last video where we ranked generic jobs on their own from worst to best, we're not going to be covering special characters. Let's just stick to the generic jobs for now, okay? That said, let's jump right into it, shall we? Up first, we are presenting the Destroyer. The Destroyer is based on a Dark Knight. So lives up to his name. We've decided to equip our Dark Knight with Throw so that they can get even more range out of their nastiness. Speed will benefit them in this regard, but what we're really looking for is high movement rate so we get further range than what we can achieve with our Darkness. Speaking of which, that is what's going to pretty much be keeping you alive. Sanguine Sword to top off your HP and Infernal Strike to top off your MP if you're using Mana Shield like we suggest. We also suggest Move Plus 3 as your movement ability, and of course, Vehemence always works on a Dark Knight, but just be careful with that reduced defensive power. Don't throw him out into the fray on his own. You're going to want somebody to support him because he will be vulnerable to counterattack. You could always just be patient and look for opportunities to take out enemy characters one by one, but when you see them grouped up together, it's very tempting to go in with an unholy sacrifice. If you're looking for an absolutely unstoppable juggernaut, the destroyer is for you. Now I'd like to present the glass cannon. Glass cannon is a black mage paired with Aido. <laughs> this is an incredibly strong combination. Black mages have the highest MA stats in the game. This is a perfect delivery vehicle for Aido. I recommend Shira Hidori as a defensive measure, Arcane Strength to boost your Aido, and move plus three so you can take advantage of those opportunities where an enemy character is off on his own, you need to come in for all your allies and deliver an, a group-wide heal, or the enemy groups up and you want to bust out your Churgerodon on them. No matter how you decide to play your glass cannon, you should play him safe. Make sure he's well protected and that it's difficult for your enemies to get to him. Next up, the Sneaky Stealthy Assassin. The Assassin is based on a ninja. So we are looking at one of the fastest characters you can bring to a fight. Ninjas right off the bat have great physical attack, but where they really shine is their speed and movement. This benefits their throw greatly, so bust out all those super rare high attack power swords and maces and whatever you got that you've just been holding on to and throw them. We like running our ninja with a little bit more utility, so we gave them items and throw items because if they can revive an ally and very quickly after throw them an elixir, that provides a lot of value for your team and can actually turn the tide of the battle at that critical moment. For defensive abilities, we prefer Mana Shield and Mana Font instead of Move Plus 3. The ninja already comes equipped with a high enough movement stat, so Mana Font gives them just enough MP to survive that next attack to give themselves that defensive boost that they need and can focus on generating more damage. No matter how you decide to run your assassin, you will be impressed with how far they move and how often they act. And rounding out our top 4 list is the Brawler. The Brawler is our closest thing we have to a support unit. 
it's based on a monk, and we decided to give him jump for that extra range where Shockwave just doesn't do enough damage, and you're finding yourself going against slower characters like Dark Knights, other black mages without Shira Hidori. Monks do great, just normal physical attack damage, but where they really shine is their ability to restore HP and MP, not just to themselves, but to allies in an AoE effect. Also consider their ability to revive other allies and get through Shira Hidori with abilities like Shockwave and Aura Blast. All in all, the Brawler gives you a support character who can survive long enough on his own and let other characters in your party focus more on damage. Well, that's it for today. That was certainly a short one. We only wanted to showcase four builds because there are just so many out there. Do you have a favorite build that we didn't cover today? Let us know in the comments. We will definitely be making more videos of this type, so please like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. And as always, you know, we want to further the discussion, not just between me and you guys who are watching, but amongst your friends too. This is a great game and it's even better when you share it with friends, whether you're playing through the storyline for the first time or again, or you're playing each other just to test how good your characters really are. Let's continue the discussion, let's grow the community, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, be well everyone.